I'm going to show you how I made this hunting knife in Blender from start to finish. Visualizing products like this is the best way to get paid with Blender. And if you want to learn more about the tools and techniques that you see me use in these videos, then check out my new Blender ebook, the link is below. To get a good reference image of this knife like you can see right here on my screen, I put this thing on my table and I use my phone to take a picture. Now normally you would probably need some more close up pictures of the sides and the front and all this other stuff around the knife. I don't have to do that this time because I have the knife in my hand so I can just look at it. But otherwise if you're trying to visualize a specific product for a company or something, you're either going to have to do some research yourself to find some pictures of this product online or if you're working very closely with the company they can send you some very good pictures and references. Maybe they can even send you blueprints. We're going to load this reference into our scene by pressing 7 to go to top view shift a image reference and I'm going to load up my reference image like this now I have the picture in the background I'm going to reduce the opacity a little bit I want to scale it up and let's throw it down on the z-axis now this is effectively like a blueprint that we can follow as we model and we can start making the knife I don't know if you can see this on camera, but this knife is made of three sheets of metal. One sheet is in the middle and that's the part that makes the blade. And then you got the shit on the top and the bottom which makes the handle and the hilt around the blade. So we're going to add a plane and we're going to use that to create the middle sheet of metal first. And this is also going to consist of the blade. Place that on this corner over here, lower this edge and align it here, and then push this one backwards on the x-axis. Align this part on the right side, subdivide the plane and delete this vertex. Now we can put this at a bit of an angle and we're going to use this vertex to form this curve here. Now we're going to need some loop cuts because we need some more geometry to get this curve right. This is just a low poly version, we're going to subdivide this, don't worry. And we're also going to extrude this edge out here to create this last part. Extrude this edge backwards to make the handle. We need some more geometry here so that we can align it with this curve up here. And when we subdivide this, we're going to be able to shape this a little bit better. Now take these three edges and extrude them forwards. Align this vertex with this corner here and this vertex somewhere up here so that we can take these three edges, which are currently a bit crooked. Go to W, Loop Tools, G Stretch and change the method from spread evenly to project. Now this is going to be perfectly aligned here. We're going to slide this edge up slightly so it meets this line. And then we can select these two edges, go to Loop Tools, G Stretch and set this to project. I went deep on this Loop Tools shit in my ebook. So if you want to learn more about how to handle your topology correctly, go check Check that out. If you don't want to buy nothing or if you think it's a scam, then go watch Thomas Colin on YouTube. He's the king of topology and that shit's for free. Now we're going to extrude these three edges and bring them forward to the middle part of the blade here. We're going to align this edge down here and use these vertices to shape out the blade. I'm also going to use my G stretch one more time here. Then let's extrude this part and bring it all the way to the front. We're not going to turn this into a triangle just yet. The reason for that is because we need a couple more loop cuts so that we can create this part. And once we align this properly, then we can extrude this little triangle up here and we can also use this lower edge to extrude the lower part of the front of the blade. So we're going to have to do this in a couple of steps because we have to make sure that we have the same number of vertices down here as up here so that we can connect this. We're going to tear this vertex back here, then take this lower edge loop and slide it up with double G. We're going to bring this edge all the way to the front over here, align these vertices a little bit better, and now we can fill in this gap with a couple of quads. Take this vertex back here and tear that with a V. Now place the 3D cursor on this part of the knife, select this outer edge loop, use your shear tool, and then use this purple one on the side to push this down. Down. Set the 3D cursor as a pivot point and then use this purple one to push this down. If you look at it from front view, now this is going to be a perfectly straight line, but it's going to sit at a good angle so that you can have the part of the knife which is used to cut people. If you stick this knife through a skinny man's chest, it's going to come out of the other side. Now let's also tear this vertex back there, select this edge loop, accept the edge in the front, slide that all the way down with double G. Now this is also going to take the angle on this slope and then with double G we're going to slide it back so that it aligns with this edge loop right here. Now we're going to have to make some extra space so that we can make the sharp part of the blade. And to do this, we first need to pull the point inwards a little bit. Then we're going to take this lower edge segment and then we're going to slide it up so that it's aligned with the inside of this sharp bit. We might have to adjust some vertices manually to get this right. And then we're going to start selecting some of these edges at the bottom and extruding them downwards. And that's going to give us some new faces that we can use for this. Once we extruded those extra faces, we're just going to lower those down a little bit to make this part of it sharper. And now this is a little bit way too thick, so we're going to place a 3D cursor anywhere on this flat surface at the top of the blade. Then we're just going to select all this geometry on the blade and with the 3D cursor as a pivot point scale that down a little bit on the z-axis. It's supposed to be quite thin so the gap here is only supposed to be something like this. We're also going to slide this vertex forwards a little bit and then this edge loop we're going to g-stretch. We can now start filling this gap here, slide this forwards a little bit, give me a little triangle right here. Now place the 3D cursor on the lowest part of the blade, select everything, extrude, right click and scale it to minus one on the z-axis while the 3D cursor is a pivot point. And now we added some thickness to this sheet but the blade connects on this sharp part. Part. Make sure to connect the normals and merge vertices by distance. Now the first sheet is ready, the rest is going to be pretty simple. 
First, we're going to take this surface from the hilt, duplicate that and separate it to new object. We're going to extrude that to give it a little bit of thickness like this. Then place the 3D cursor on this edge here, select these faces in the back, duplicate, right click and scale them to zero on the Z axis and separate this to new object as well. Extrude this downward slightly just to give it a little bit of thickness like this. We need this because there has to be a gap here into which we're going to fit these little tools. Now I want an extra loop cut here, align the edge with this metal part of the handle and now we can extrude this up to make the back part which is also metal right here we're going to inset that a little bit because we have an extra surface here maybe slide this further inwards and lift this whole thing up a little bit further we have to close the back side of this gap so place the 3d cursor right here select these edges extrude p to separate into new object select everything extrude right click and scale to zero with the 3d cursor here now extrude this to give it a little bit of thickness and align this back side with the back part of the handle and now it's time to subdivide this because we're going to have to create this gap here where you can stick your finger so you can pull the tool out. So give me two levels of subdivision surface on this mesh. We're going to select all the sharp edges and for now we're going to give them a mean crease value of one. We probably should have done this filling after we subdivide this so we can follow this curve. So we're going to get rid of that for now and we'll make it again later. I need some more geometry over here to get more control over the shape of this curve. It's also a good time to subdivide this lower edge and we're also going to select all the sharp edges and give them a mean crease. On the blade we have to be very careful with which edges we're selecting to give them a mean crease. For example this part cannot be smooth. There has to be a clear difference between the sharp part of the blade the face of the blade and this part of the blade and all this other shit so select all of that mean crease one Let's also do a crease up here now we get the same curve over here as long as this geometry is perfectly aligned so we can adjust this curve a little bit to make it look a bit nicer now i want a couple more loop cuts on these parts right here and that will allow me to select a surface like this and then once i have this surface selected i can inset that and that's going to allow me to create this circular cutoff here when you inset this make sure to check edge rail so this shit follows a straight line we might have to slide some of this outwards a little bit and now we can align the geometry from the inset area with this semicircle we can also delete this part here then we're going to select these two edge loops right now they're crooked so give me loop tools space loop tools relax and it might be a good idea to use a circle here so that we can figure out exactly where to place these vertices to make them form a perfect semicircle so we can now just align these vertices with the vertices of the new circle which we just created w bridge edge loops and give me a mean crease here as well to get this under control almost finished modeling this thing we have a piece of what appears to be bone or something that makes this handle so let's select this surface up here duplicate p to separate extrude upwards with the 3d cursor placed over here i'm going to push these vertices back backwards a little bit so that they align with this angled part loop tools g stretch to straighten this out now give me a loop cut to align this with this edge loop right here then we're going to slide this edge loop inward so that it meets this part same thing on the other side and then this we have to slide down and then slide backwards to make a reasonably smooth transition between this part and this part down here it doesn't have to be perfectly smooth but it has to at least kind of slope downwards towards that we can slide these vertices backwards a little bit to make this look nicer we need some bevels on the hilt here we're going to delete the entire bottom surface then select the entire top surface select this back face over here and these faces on the curve now inset this make sure the edge rail is checked and now you have exactly the kind of geometry that you need to make the bevels on this side the front side this part but not this part now if we place the 3d cursor somewhere on the middle of the middle sheet we can take all this shit at the top here shift it to duplicate it and scale it to minus one on the z-axis to mirror it down to the other side the last thing that we have to model here is going to be this tool on the inside so to create that i just need some of these edges separate them to new object extrude this one inwards like this and this is going to be the tip of this little knife that you can get back here maybe it's a can opener or something fuck knows we're gonna extrude this inwards a little bit i don't care about making this look like a real knife so i don't care what the inner part looks like but i do want some more geometry up here that i can use to make this little gap so we're going to inset a couple of faces rearrange them to align them with this little shape in the reference get this out of the way and now we can extrude this inwards to create this little shape here let's also copy that to the underside i just remembered that we have this cut in the front here as well so give me some more geometry like this like this maybe another loop cut right here now we can take this edge and bevel it with Control b that's going to give us roughly the shape that we're going for it looks like this edge here is supposed to be a little bit lower than this part so we're going to select that edge and drop it down a little bit like this these edges we're going to slide back and forth a little bit and that way they're also going to follow the same slope now join these two vertices drop this edge down inside select the outline mean crease one now everything on the model is ready and we can start texturing 
Luckily, we're only going to need to download one texture for this model. I'm going to download some kind of wood texture for the handle of this knife. I'm browsing this shit on MP and CG because textures.com doesn't want to give me anything good. I think this looks pretty good, so I'm going to download that. And this knife looks slightly scratched, so we're going to try to download this material and see what we can do. I might just end up not using this because maybe this is going to look like shit. Maybe I'll just do something procedural, but we'll see. The handle of the knife has some kind of little decal down here. It looks like an animal of some sort. So I'm going to take a picture of a buffalo from Google. Google. I'll delete the background from this picture. We're going to make the buffalo completely black and the background can be completely white. Now I'm going to make this buffalo blurry and this now acts as a height map which I can turn into a normal map in paint. We're going to save this as decal normal map. Now let's duplicate this and throw it to the side somewhere so that we can apply the modifiers. And the reason we need to apply the modifiers is so that we can UV unwrap this properly. We're not going to talk about how to UV unwrap this shit on camera. It's the most boring topic in the world. This is going to be in the new ebook update, but we're going to talk more about that at the end of the video. Uh, give me a new material for the blade and we're going to name this steel. We're going to drag and drop the normal map, the roughness map, and let's also try the color map. Plug color in the base color. Normal map's got to be non-color. Run the normal map through a normal map node. Rough Roughness gotta be non-color, plug that shit into roughness, crank up the metallic, and I think this looks pretty shitty, let's try without the roughness map. If I set the roughness myself, it looks a little bit better. We're going to make our own roughness map using a noise texture node, node wrangler to control that. Also give me a color ramp, plug the color into color, color into roughness. Now we're gonna increase the scale on that. Then we're gonna increase the y-axis scale with the node wrangler, and this is gonna turn this into a bunch of thin lines, it's gonna make it look like it's brushed or something. Now just change the colors in the color ramp, and now this starts to look like it was brushed and it looks a bit better we're gonna apply the same material to the hilt also these blades down here and the back part of the handle but this part of the handle needs to have a wooden texture so assign a new material to that and name that wood now we're gonna drop the wood texture the wood normal map and the wood roughness map into this material that's what i'm talking about this looks way better to keep all this shit together, we got some nails hammered into the handle. I don't feel like doing this with normal maps. I'm just going to model them. So to make one of these little screws, I'm going to select a surface. I'm going to inset that surface. With loop tools, I'm going to turn it into circle. I'll place this somewhere around the nail. Then I'll inset it again, extrude it down a little bit like this. And then I'll use this edge loop to create the nail itself. Now with a subdivision surface modifier, this looks pretty nice, doesn't it? We can duplicate this and bring it down here for the next screw. I'll just select this edge loop and the outer edge loop here w bridge edge loops i know the geometry is kind of shitty but it doesn't matter we'll be all right and then i want the last one around here somewhere so inset delete faces duplicate this bring it over there and now bridge edge loops and we're good to go we're also going to bring one of these back here to the back of the handle all the screws are going to get a new material assigned to them that just has to be some sort of dark gray simple material i also made this little simple texture with some lines i'm using that as a bump map as well to just make it look kind of like it's a nail like it has a little bit of texture or something it looks kind of shitty right now but it's going to look way cooler in the render then based on this uv map that handles this area over here we're going to have to place that little normal map that we made for the fucking buffalo onto this exact point so we're gonna go up here uvs export uv layout we're going to name that decal uv i'll take my buffalo i'll place it underneath that part of the image it's got to be quite a bit smaller than this something like this size should look pretty cool now we can save this image load it up into the steel material run it through a normal map node plug that into the normal input of the principal node and now that that's going to be visible on the knife. It looks a little bit too big. We can always make that smaller in paint net. And once we refresh it in Blender, it's going to be a bit better. Now I'm just going to take my time to figure out a way to render this. I'm not going to do this on camera because it's not that interesting. It's just a simple background with an HDRI and maybe a couple of lights. All of this shit is going to be explained in detail in the new ebook update. We're going to talk about texturing, rendering, lighting, a little bit of animation, normal maps, all of this shit that you need for product visualization. I'm going to teach it in the ebook in the upcoming update. Use the discount code below to get 20% off before the the update pulls up and if you want to download this model it's going to be on my patreon page along with all this other stuff that you see me making these videos like the damn video and subscribe to the channel let me know what you want to see next and i'll see you in the next one